Hi everyone and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me, Tom. Now, a few months back, some of you may remember, I did an upgrade video on my Ident Micro One. That's the kit computer I produced a few years ago, but kind of simulated the kind of look and feel of a 1980s all-in-one micro. Fortunately at the time, that kit had been discontinued but I was overwhelmed with the interest in the kit and people ask me, would I consider reproducing it or people saying they wanted to go and build their own and they're inspired by what they saw. Well, if you're still interested, you're in luck. As today, I'm pleased to announce the reissuing of the Micro One kit in the form of the Micro One Mark V. However, unlike previous kits, this one has a bit of a twist. You don't need any fancy equipment, you don't need to buy any expensive components from me. You can simply download the plans from our Patreon page for a small fee. This is ideal if you're wanting a home project or a STEM project for school or college. The materials are easy to come by, they're recyclable, they're disposable. You can simply take the expensive parts such as the keyboard and the Raspberry Pi out and reuse them over and over again. It really is an ideal solution. I am so excited to be able to bring this to you right here today. So with that said, let's get building. First, head over to www.ident-online.co.uk forward slash computer. And from there, click on the Micro 1.5 tab. Then from the sub menu, select license key. This will produce a link through to our Patreon page. From here, you'll see the Ident Micro 1.5 kit tier on the right hand side of the page. Simply click on the Join $12 tier. You'll be taken to Patreon's checkout screen for payment details. If you're not a member of Patreon, you'll be asked to set a new account up. Once payment has gone through, return to the main Wi-Fi Sheet Patreon page where the $12 tier will be unlocked. Click on the Micro 1.5 license key. This will give you the full listing, including the required license key for the PDF download, which we've scrambled for this video. Copy the key or write it down. On the same screen, there is a link back to the PDF files on ident-online. Click to return to the main site. The PDF downloads page has two options. A free sample PDF which contains just the instructions and the full encrypted file. Click to download the full PDF. Most modern browsers will try to open this file for you. Next, enter the key you were given from Patreon and click Submit or Continue. The PDF will unlock and you can now print it off. The last four pages of the PDF contain the cutout parts required for the build, so it's up to you if you want to print the whole document. Okay, let's start building. First, we'll need some 5mm thick foam board. This can easily be found at arts and crafts stores and normally comes in black or white. Next, we'll need some 1.5mm thick mount card. Again, this can also be found at arts and crafts stores and comes in a range of colours normally with a white backing side. We're also going to need a large cutting mat or board. Taking a metal ruler or craft knife, cut out all the template items. Some items are larger than the A4 print space available. These have a letter and large arrows and need to be joined together as one item. Taking a piece of 5mm thick foam board and a glue stick, we need to stick down all the template items as close together as possible, remembering items with arrows need to be stuck side by side and cut out as one item. So we'll just finish by adding the top C labelled items together. OK, we'll repeat the process for the 1.5mm trim parts. These need to be cut and stuck to the thinner mounting board. Each item is labelled as to which board type it needs. Next we'll cut out all the shaded cut out internal areas, again using a metal ruler and sharp craft knife. 
Use a 2mm drill bit to make the required mounting holes for the bolts. The two outer supports have a hash line. If you're using a smaller keyboard and so need the mounting plate, leave these. However, if your keyboard just fits the case, then you can cut along the line to lower the slope height. With all parts cut out, it's time to fire up the hot mount glue gun. Each item has a number, so it's just a case of fixing each to each. So starting with the rear case support, item number three. When using hot mount glue, you do need to work fast. We can use the end of the metal ruler to make sure the parts are straight and square. We'll repeat the process for the two case sides. Remember, all parts should be fixed with the paper labels facing inwards and numbered parts fixed to their adjoining number. OK, with the case more or less complete, we can test fit the keyboard mounting plate and the case lid. Yep, starting to take shape. Now, the keyboard surround is marked out with a common mini keyboard. However, if your keyboard is smaller than this, you can mark it out in the plate and cut a smaller hole as required. Make sure you allow the outer lip of the keyboard to sit on top of the mount plate so the keyboard doesn't drop through the hole and into the case. So again, using a metal ruler and sharp knife, we'll cut out the plate to the stock size for the keyboard we're going to use. OK, so we'll just check the keyboard fits, but we won't fix it in at this stage. For the next part, I've moved to the garage and have set up ready to spray paint required items. First, I'll give the 1.5mm card trim a coat of yellow, remembering to paint the outer parts so not the sides with the paper template still fixed. and then the main case chassis and keyboard surround, which I'll paint a matte black. You don't have to paint if you can't or don't want to, and of course you can pick and choose whatever colours you want to use. You could use an acrylic based brush on paint if you can't or don't want to use spray paints. But remember not to get the items too wet or waterlogged with paint, and allow everything to dry properly. OK, so we've got all our freshly painted parts. Once all dry, it's time for the final assembly. So we'll start with attaching the rear trim panel, remembering the template paper label side faces inwards. As with all the other items, I'll be using hot mount glue for this. Once attached, I'll add a little more glue to the inside. And now to add the two side panel trims, making sure all parts are square level and match up. Next we'll attach the keyboard to its mount. Placing the mount plate with paper template facing upwards, we'll attach it to the plastic of the keyboard case with a few spots of hot mount. There is no need to over glue this and keep the glue away from the top of the keyboard and the keys themselves. OK, just check that's all secure. And we'll do another test fit into the case, but we still won't glue it in place just yet. Next, we need two short 12cm USB extender cables. The two socket ends of the extenders need to be glued into the holes in the rear trim. Again, be careful not to get glue inside any of the USB sockets. We'll just repeat the process for the second of the cables. Next, take four long 1.5mm bolts. Each bolt will require three nuts. Place the four bolts through the holes drilled in the case and screw two nuts onto each bolt to secure it in place. Now we can add our Raspberry Pi board. The kit can support any board in the B plus range. It's also an idea to add your micro SD card to your Pi board at this stage. 
Once the Pi board is sitting on the eight nuts, use the remaining four to secure it into the chassis. Now we can plug the two fixed USB extender cables into the two lower USB ports on the Pi board. With that done, we can now apply hot mount glue to the tops of the chassis sides, making sure we don't get glue on the outer trim, before finally attaching the keyboard. With the keyboard in, we just need to plug its USB lead into one of the two spare top USB ports on the Raspberry Pi board. Once done, the case lid should friction fit in place. This won't require gluing. Finally, take four self adhesive felt or foam feet pads and attach one to each corner of the underside of the case. This will raise the Micro One off the ground, allowing for better ventilation when running. And there we go, a super inexpensive, own build 80s retro feel, Pi powered home computer. Complete with power, HD video, AV socket, and twin USB ports on the rear. And access to the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins through the top of the case. So, I guess there's only one thing left to do, and that's see if it'll power up. And yep, seen here with a wonderful clashing pink LCD monitor and running our custom RISC-OS operating system. And there we are, all set up, built and running. I just wanna say a huge thank you for those of you that have already supported us on Patreon. If you're interested in the kit and want to get hold of the plans, it's www.patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. I really hope this offers a cheap and affordable solution for building a really cool retro looking computer for the Raspberry Pi. Okay, well that is just about it for me. As ever, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for your company once again, and I'll see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.